Okay, we're back. You're listening to DJ Awesome on Brady Soak Radio, live from the Brookway Activity Centre. If you want to get in touch with us, please do studio at bradysookradio.org.uk. Uh, if you want to get involved with the station, learn a bit more about us, um, and just generally find something new to do because there's something for everyone. If you want to get in touch with us as a show, we're on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash VGM Awesome, as well as our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com forward slash VGM Awesome. And of course, we as a station and a show are both on Twitter, which is Bradley Stoke FM or at VGM Awesome. Check us out because we'll be checking you out. Yeah. Uh, not really, because it's a bit creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. It's very agreed. I- agreed. 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 Um, but we're talking Warhorse, okay? Uh, I don't want to go on too much longer, um, but I want to get some real answers from you now, uh, Boomstick. <laughs> sure. Um, Crofty, I know you're itching to um, sort of get involved and say something to your good friend and Way fellow in. compatriot. Weigh in. <laughs> <laughs> about <laughs> said film. Uh, D- does it strike you as a film that you would want to go and see at cinema? I, in fact, I would love to go and see this film, actually. I'm kind of gutted that I couldn't <laughs> go and see it because I was too busy working on projects for people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's no bitterness in that wow. at all whatsoever. Wow. But, um, <laughs> but, okay. It's, it's, a, it's a throwback to like a, the 1940s style of film, isn't it? No. It, <laughs> <laughs> it was a throwback to the theatre production that's currently ongoing and far better, <laughs> I imagine. Why? You what? imagine? So how can you say I know, that you I think actually it... seen the original? Well, a good the point. Ori- a good qu- a good, I was going to say, the original point. might act... The original, I'm not saying that it is, because it may well not be. The original uh, may actually be inferior to the film. I agreed. I do know someone who was in the theatre production, yeah. and I've seen a lot of uh, stills and video from it, but I haven't seen the thing in full, but like or live. But I just get the impression that it was a very clever film, to, uh, theatre show okay. to make. Um, and for that alone, probably it's just better than this. <laughs> um... I think if you like, if you're going to see this as a, as a sort of broad sweeping cinematic yeah, cinematic epic, mm. I think the things like lighting, I know it's, I don't want to get hung up on it, but like things like <laughs> you that, are hung up on it, restrict your cinematic. Your, what are you trying to do with a cinematic? But I think that might just be you, though, or, or not just well, you, but someone with a critical that, and filmmaking in mind. In that cinema, it was just me. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just crazy. Maybe you know, film students are just. An island. No, I, I can <laughs> totally, the millions of people I can totally the see where you're coming from because I'd be the same if I'm listening to music or video games. You you do instantly and autopilotly, if that's a word. Yeah. You you no. immediately <laughs> sort of critique it and, and you analyze and you learn, you know, and that's fine, that's good. But I just think, I mean, it must be it must be a challenge for you to, to watch because you, you you are looking at those kind of things. But for me, I am a, I'm a fan of Spielberg, and I'm not being biased because there's some films I really don't like of his. But mm. I mean, I've with this one, I've not felt something actually felt something for any of Spielberg's films since watching Schindler's List and, and this was the first one I know Schindler's List was an incredibly amazingly shot film yes hey, that Ro- was one in black and white what was about that Ross did you cry <laughs> great great <laughs> did you cry at the end of Schindler's List I think everyone cried at the end of Schindler's List didn't you didn't it? answer that question um, I think I teared up I don't think it was actual tears I, down okay the talk about that I mean <laughs> is that because maybe you I know obviously Schindler's List is completely Real, you know, it's it's all about within the Holocaust, which is of course horrific, right? Yeah. Whereas a war horse is slightly more fictional, fantastical, fantastical. Let's yeah, say. and I think that that partly that that half and half sort of fantastical real thing that he did with war horse is something that put me off as well. Yeah. Like uh, like the horse is like the driving force of everything, and I thought that the war would have been a bigger deal. And normally, like mm. normally, Spiel gets really hung up on war. Like, like he does, he loves he loves war stuff. Okay, but right. um. Like it seemed like that wasn't where the heart of this story was mm-hmm. for me. It was about, um, if anything, the story was about connecting the, those people connecting and and using the horse to connect to different okay. people. And so it and comes back to the metaphor conflict. kind of thing. Yeah, except I don't think it was translated very well in this film. I think that was. I think that is the point of the story. Boom sticks rain. Um, <laughs> I'm preparing <laughs> for these space. I'm uh, preparing for fireworks. No, I, I'm gonna give. War Horse, <laughs> what has been d- said <laughs> as Spielberg's best film to date, a 2 out of 10. <laughs> you turning my mic down. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Nope. I was going to say, I bet you should turn his mic you down. You gave Mission Impossible more. No, that got zero. <laughs> no, zero. But you gave, what did you give to Johnny English? Uh, I think I gave, gave that three. a 2. <laughs> anyway, a 2. Are you kidding me? I, I'm a little bit disgusted with you. I, I feel Johnny English dirty. may have had a bit more, more to offer the world. Um, <laughs> Johnny English has more than Warhorse. Do you know what? Like, I'm ashamed to know you. I, 
<laughs> Amen, uh, John. Easy, Amen. easy, John. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, easy. John. Easy. I think. I think what like what this film wow. really taught me is that I can be better than Spielberg. <laughs> <laughs> It, I know it you're really, full of one liners today. It was really arrogant, oh but like, I genuinely felt encouraged by this film as a filmmaker. What you felt? Well, if Spielberg can do that, then yes. I can do this. And he has like infinite money and power and resources, and wow. he made that. Oh, I've got God. high hopes for, uh, that, for me does, and us. Does that mean we're going to see your own adaptation for it? Uh, <laughs> well, I'm going to make War Horse too. War Horse. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make it the way it should. The, 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 it's one of those sequels that's God. way, way better than the original. Okay, all right. <laughs> Well, um, we're going to go straight on with the track from Metro 2033, which is a really cool post-apocalyptic game, uh, and whereby next week, Boomstick won't be on the show. Um, he will be probably lying in a ditch somewhere, having been filled in by said director, Steven Spielberg. But um, that's all coming up after Metro 2033.